What's going on here guys? Um, M Tech here. I had a lot of people asking me questions on the coil, so I figured I'd do a video and tell you about it. Um, it's my best Tesla coil yet, designed to actually act like a pump when you earth ground it here. Um, you'd be earth grounding basically the back of the L2 coil, the bottom of the L2, um, after the diodes. And it's a dead, simple coil, very small, um, very high Q coil. The T and B means the top and bottom, because if, you, wa if um, you hook up your primary coil upside down, it'll be out of phase and not work. So, I have the, prop the uh, 400 volt transistor properly mounted on a heat sink again. Um, basically, we took everything we learned within the past month and applied it to this Tesla coil um, and it's far superior to these designs because this Tesla coil is using negative resistance injection from a DIAC 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 and it's the highest voltage driven Tesla coil I've ever had um, using a ZVS here and I need to order the correct 20 watt cement resistor 1.5k is what I need I kind of had to stack some 300k's together to get 900 but ideally I really need 1.5k 20 watt cement resistor to really properly draw the right power we need from the ZVS um, so what makes a real Tesla coil a real Tesla coil is the way you construct it you have to have your Tesla coil being the secondary here. This coil, there's no exceptions, this coil has to be as wide as it is tall. It has to be a one-to-one -one ratio. And ideally your primary is one thick loop or one thick strap. And you um, make it resonant with the correct value capacitor in parallel there. So I'll switch this thing on show you what it can do. And basically you're aiming to make this coil act like a pump when you earth ground it here. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to become more efficient when you earth ground it and draw in power from the earth. Um, and create those phenomenal wireless power effects in these little lights. I've actually had these blow out just by touching them to metal nearby the coil without drawing power from it. And this coil is a probably about 30 or 40 times better than my old coils because it's constructed properly fed with a higher voltage input through the ZVS it's much more efficient built exactly like Tesla says like a real Tesla coil um, to make it perfect it would be built on firework mortar, mortar tube I said it in the video description of my last video I think it's HD PE tubing it's some type of firework tube that has very low dielectric loss, meaning when you turn the coil on, um, the energy doesn't get absorbed into the material and turned into heat. So, this coil, I'll turn it on. See our current consumption, 100 milliamps. And it's tiny too, and it just acts so phenomenal. Because it's the Q factor that makes it behave this way the Q factor and the negative resistance so it's absolutely crazy and there's a nodal point with the power where if you get about six well, inches away from it the power is the highest and this coil separates cause from effect through the negative resistance meaning the closer I get to it, the less power we draw. Let's see if I can show that. So that's the negative resistance taking over. And um, here's the earth ground here connected to my heater. I'll try and show this on camera. When I disconnect the earth ground, it'll consume more power. So we're seeing that earth pumping effect. The, the, the wireless power effects get much better when I earth ground it and um, the system basically acts like an energy pump once you earth ground it 
and as you see we're saving a little bit of power so the key to fully exploit that effect is to um, feed the coil with the most abrupt unidirectional DC impulses possible with the highest voltage possible probably 600 volts to uh, 2 kV DC through a ZVS and what should happen is the negative resistance effect should scale and the higher the voltage you feed into the coil while maintaining all your resonances perfectly um, the less current the coil will draw to the point where it might actually produce power and not consume it at all which is very interesting so the system would essentially act like a pump and you basically want the Tesla coil to operate off cold electricity and cold electricity is just a dirty name for longitudinal dielectricity that Eric Dollard talks about all the time um, this type of power is the opposite to loss uh, this type of power is the opposite to electromagnetic radiation um, electromagnetic radiation is the definition of loss and subject to Ohm's law heat death but if you're using abrupt unidirectional DC discharges the longitudinal dielectric power that Eric Dollar talks about and you inject negative resistance into it in a resonant auto-tuning Tesla coil system like this um, it should reach a trigger point where the higher the voltage you feed into it due to the negative resistance the lower the current consumption will be on your coil as long as you have it heavy earth grounded because that pumping effect will take over and I can turn this voltage input up a little bit and just show you exactly how crazy the coil gets so and I had to put that little spacer here on the coil because if the coil was directly on the heat sink it wouldn't turn on so I hope that helps um, it's the most fantastical coil I've ever built. It's dead simple. Um, the simplicity of it is the sophistication. It's it's crazy. Um, to get it operating properly, I need a 1.5K 20 watt cement resistor there. It's a little inefficient, but still works crazy good. Um, good look at the schematic. Other thing that's crazy too is because this coil outputs um, dielectricity and not electromagnetism because you have to perfect it to output dielectricity longitudinal dielectricity and the closer the heavier we draw power from the coil the less current um, it consumes because of the negative resistance taking over and the earth pumping effect so as you see if I'm right in the coil it pretty much dies and goes out. Um, so the crazy thing is, this type of power actually actually does not interfere with sensitive electronics. So that's what's so crazy. I have to just perfect the setup a little bit more. I'm probably going to put these on the website soon, sell them, along with the cold electricity inverter circuit. Um, so I will show you how crazy it gets with a big fluorescent tube. I mean, that's just... I'll put this back up here. So that's pretty crazy from a little coil. And it would be the Q factor of the coil that's doing that. Just right here, let you guys appreciate it. So that's pretty crazy. Current consumption is 140 milliamps. Could be much better if we had the right resistor. They generate a bit of heat. So I figured I'd show that off, let you guys see it. Um, answer all the questions I could. Also, there's no sparks that come off it. Absolutely crazy. Just 
zoom in a little less power now. That is just so bright. I wonder if you could, um, as long as you could make sure the material is low loss dielectric, if you could somehow put something in here that generates such an intense light from such an efficient, um, so efficiently, it would somehow produce, well, you know what I'm getting at. You line the inside of the coil somehow with maybe super advanced solar panels, and a plasma develops inside the Tesla coil tube and gets very bright and intense for very minimal power input due to the earth pumping effect and negative resistance injection you um you know you have a very you have a power device that'll basically go forever but but, but you know that's got to be thoroughly tested so this is one of the most crazy coils I've ever had so I'll let you guys see that. It's almost like you got a lock on to the power, and there's very minimal sparks that come off it, too, which is interesting. And they're almost like a pure bluish, pure white color, being the cold electricity from the avalanche effect of the uh, side axe. So that's how you know you got it working right. Minimal sparks. Um, And all those people who build big, tall Tesla coils, those are not Tesla coils. Those are Rumikov coils. Those are incorrect. A real Tesla coil is as tall as it is wide and has a maximum Q factor. And you feed it with abrupt unidirectional DC impulses. And it needs negative resistance injection from side axe. So yeah, that's that. I'll be selling these guys. Anyone wants to buy one, feel free to reach out to me. Um, existing customers will get a discount on this new crazy model. It's a lot smaller, a lot more efficient. Um, the ones for sale won't have a stack of these three resistors here. It'll have a the proper 1.5K resistor. And ideally, I'd like to feed this thing with the full 600 volts of that ZVS, not 250, because we're at 250 right now. And as long as everything's balanced right, this thing should act crazy. So, I think I pretty much explained the pumping effect, how it works. It's a dead simple coil. What makes this one a million times better than the old one is the primary is one loop, fully adjustable, just like Tesla recommends. The Tesla coil, the secondary, is 18 AWG. It's as tall as it is wide, super high quality, very high Q factor. This coil excels at putting most of its energy into free space um, as useful power once all the components are balanced right. And once I perfect the circuitry a little more, I could probably draw a lot of po useful power from the proper receiver coil from this device. So, figured I'd show you guys that, give you an update. Um, this one's a lot more refined than the older coil in the old video. More powerful field, more power efficient. That's what the side act looks like. I have two in parallel. Um, 22K biasing resistor. To absolutely perfect this thing, the coil should be wrapped not on PVC pipe. The coil should be wrapped on, um, it's, it's firework mortar tube. It's HTPE or HDFE. I forgot the exact name, but it's a type of firework mortar tube that has very low dielectric loss. And basically that means the coil operates more efficiently. The wireless power isn't absorbed into the plastic material and turns into heat, so... That's how to fully maximize it and to make it MOSFET driven, not NPN transistor driven. Because I'm using an MJE 4009 transistor, 400 volt. Oh no, it's 600 volt DC input that it can handle. So, that's that. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, join the Patreon. It's a dead simple coil. Super impressive. And yeah, it's operating off of... Nikola Tesla's principles. And it does behave a little bit like a pump when earth grounded. I'll show that effect again. Draws less current when we earth ground it. 
It'll even spark a little bit when contacting the earth. Because the coil is um, sucking in power. It's sucking in... It, the coil is basically a dielectric inductor with the earth ground. And it's acting like a charge pump with the earth. So, that explains it. Nothing crazy about it. Nothing woohoo or magic or unexplainable. It's essentially a negative resistance charge pump. So... Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and join the Patreon. And thank you, everybody.